Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. I am back here today with another episode. We're going to be talking about WWE 2K20 to an extent. Uh, we're kind of going to take a trip back, you know, memory lane. Um, damn, the man is actually not with me here. I'm sure everybody's wondering, well, we just heard his voice. How is he not there? I used that soundbite from a previous episode. Dan, the man couldn't make it today, um, so I decided to record solo for this particular episode uh, because the topic at hand is one that I've experienced uh, firsthand and Dan, the man, has not. So for those of you um, who don't know or who are not aware yet, WWE 2K20 dropped uh, late October. Uh, the release was very disastrous. Uh, essentially, it seems like 2K20 as of this point, is still a half-made game. It is still broken to a certain extent. I myself have not experienced it personally because I am waiting until Black Friday to get it for um, half off. But it's very disastrous. You know, uh, Dan the Man, uh, you know, made a comment one time saying that this was WWE 2K20. This was their opportunity to go all out and to introduce, you know, the next generation of games, you know, of wrestling games, you know, to the franchise. Um, like you kind of think about it, you know, in the year 2000, it was SmackDown 1. Um, and then in 2010, you know, uh, SmackDown versus Raw 2010, you know, like those those uh, games that it sort of introduced like the next, you know, 10 years, the next generation of games. Very, very good games. And it seemed like we kind of had, you know, the ball going. Um, and granted, in each and every generation, there's going to be games that flop. There's going to be games that do better than others. But it seems like 2K didn't get the proper start for this year. Of, or for this generation, it seems like, you know, I understand that there was a nasty thing with Yuke sleeping. And so they quickly had to, you know, get their heads together and go, okay, what do we got to do? But the fact that the game has been released and it is broken beyond belief. I mean, trying to do the most generic thing of, you know, going into create a superstar, a WWE superstar and trying to alter threads and alter clothing. And you have a Becky Lynch who's eyes you know uh eyes and mouth are there but her whole face disappears her hair you know is all over the place and it just seems like you know it was a matter of time just from a few years ago there was you know a certain game that came out that I'm going to talk about today it seemed like it was just a matter of time until the wrestling franchise and wrestling video games were going to be taken to a whole nother level um, Dan, the man, and myself, we did an episode, I believe one or two episodes back where we discussed and said, okay, if 2K21, if there is a 2K21, if 2K21 is on the verge of coming out next year, what can 2K do to gain the trust back from their consumers, from their fans, and to ensure that what happened in 2K20 does not happen again with 2K21 or a fraction of what happened with 2K20 doesn't happen with 2K21. Now guys, inevitably there's glitches in every single game in the world. There's no game out there that doesn't have any glitches, non-existent. But, you know, when the glitches start taking over the entire game and forbid you from doing the most generic of things that you could have done in the previous title without a problem, that's where there is a lot of, you know, questioning of, you know, are people still going to continue playing, you know, the 2K video games? You know, is 2K letting their fans down? You know, are they ever going to be able to regain that trust from their fans? Um, and let it be noted that there was two patches out on the latest patch, I believe 1.0 to 2K, you know, threw up a, you know, 15 bullet point list saying that we have fixed this, we have fixed that, we have fixed that, we have fixed this. And once the patch came out and people started playing, it seemed like only two things out of the 15 were really fixed or semi-fixed. Um, so that's also kind of been a contributing thing is when 2K says, yeah, we have a game that, you know, we patched and a lot of these things should be fixed and people go to play the game and it's like, well, no, they're not patched. They're still broken. They're not working. They're not functioning properly. Once again, 2K at this point in time is not doing themselves any type of favors by allowing for this to happen. And let it be noted that since the patch, 
I believe it's been about 10 days now, and 2K has been completely silent. There's been no blogs, no posts, no status updates, no nothing. They've just released a patch, and that's it. Um, any other side note that they've thrown has been, oh, check out you know, the Rock's entrance, check out the Fiend's entrance, and it's like... You know, you have an entire community who's telling you that your game is broken and all you're doing is, is you know, stirring the pot and adding fuel to the fire and by saying, check out the Fiend's entrance. You know, that, that's, that's not what people are asking for. People can check out the Fiend's entrance just by playing the game. Or if you don't even have the game, just YouTube it. There's about 20 people who will upload the entrance. So the topic and task at hand today is... Personally, if I were, you know, like an executive for 2K or if I was a chairman, which at this point is highly unlikely, but just if we're spitballing, if 2K has the intention of righting a wrong and making sure that they can regain their fans trust back, in my opinion, they need to do something that I don't know if it's ever been done in the history of video game technology, but they need to dial back and they have to go back several years. And I'm I'm slowly getting into my little segue here, but I think that 2K has to go back and they have to dig up WWE 2K14, which was released on, back then, the, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. They need to go back and they have to dig up WWE 2K14, put that sucker into the console and just play it. Play it and try to see how everything in that game was much more functional. Number two, how smooth everything was. And and three, how complete of a game it was. I mean, and it spread, you know, in so many different generations and it did everything correctly. Now, is it perfection? No. Is it, does it scratch perfection? I would say yes, it absolutely certainly does. Dan the man one time even asked me and said, you know, has there been a perfect 2K game? He quickly said no, and then I said, if I can give a counterpoint, 2K14 would be that game. If there was a game that scratched, you know, that bar of perfection, it would be 2K14. In in my opinion, it hits that 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 uh, bar of perfection because everything was so simple. It was a complete game. All the features you could ever want were in there. Everything was so. Uh, It was so rejuvenating because there was so much to do. There were so many things to explore. Now, what is it that makes 2K14 so good? And why should 2K go back to, you know, should dig up 2K14 and give it another shot? Well, let's go down the list. I have compiled a list here where I talk about a few things that made 2K14 one of the greatest wrestling video games in the history of wrestling video games. So here we go. Now we're going to be covering everything. I'm talking about pre-release to release to post-release. We're going to be talking about it all. So here we go. So WWE 2K14. In its genesis, it was advertised and promoted correctly. The teaser commercial featuring superstars from all generations, the Ultimate Warrior commercial, the SummerSlam press conference, Releasing entrances and finishers every day for a superstar. Everything was done in a sporadic but informal manner. So I'm going to break this down. I have bullet points here that state a few facts at a time, and I'm just going to break it down. So, you know, 2K14, I remember when, you know, the the trailer came out and you had the likes of Austin, The Rock, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback. You sort of had an influx of, you know, past superstars and current superstars, you know, uh, going back to classic promos and notable promos at the time you know that superstars were cutting i believe ryback had just turned heel so you had some of those backstage segments going on um dolph ziggler you know uh i believe when you know it was showing clips of his promo from when you know he dubbed himself you know the show off so they were very much paying attention to what's going on at the time now i will say this i will give 2k full credit where credit's due you know, when it came to the commercials or the making of the commercials, they have always nailed it. Like all like the 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 teaser commercial with Arnold, you know, and Dean Ambrose reenacting the scene from Terminator 2, you know, the Brock Lesnar stuff for Suplex City, you know, Seth Rollins literally burning down all the memorabilia. Even, you know, this year for 2K20, you know, the cocktail party. All of these commercials honestly have have always been really good. Like they always put do a bang up job, which is great. 
But for 2K14, you know, when it came to actually promoting the game, advertising the game, getting the word out there that, hey, this is the next video game that's coming out, you know, on the block. You know, they they also had the Ultimate Warrior, you know, commercial where he bursts out of the elevator and, you know, he's going through an office and he's kind of running rampant and causing chaos, um, which was pretty cool because this was the first time that we saw Ultimate Warrior having any type of, you know, um, communication with anything that was WWE-esque. And then as we all know, he eventually made his way to the Hall of Fame, got inducted, unfortunately passed away. But... Um, and then you had the SummerSlam press conference. This was actually something very neat that they did for a few years and they no longer are doing for whatever insane reason. It was actually a very good, um, fun activity. And especially this one for 2K14 sticks out like a sore thumb because Ric Flair just comes onto the stage and just takes over and hijacks the entire thing. And it's comedy gold. Like, it's it's one of those things I feel like if the WWE Network tried their best to capture some type of interaction between superstars being at the same place at the same time, you would never be able to replicate anything like this. This was a one-time, a one-off, and... Granted, we didn't get any exposure to the video game or anything like that, but it was just, it was a neat little thing for them to do. They did it for WWE 13. Um, I believe they did it for uh, SmackDown vs. Raw um, 2011, for WWE 12, WWE 13, 2K14, and 2K15 actually was the last time that they did it. For whatever insane reason, they decided to cut this off, and I felt like it's a shame because you didn't have to show gameplay, but it was just a, like it was another way of marketing the game, promoting the game, talking about the game, maybe even spilling a little bit of information. Oh, by the way, you know, a new feature that's going to be in the game this year is X, Y, and Z, and then you can have the superstars talk about that. Um, you know, and this was also another great thing was, um, you know, obviously for 2K20, there was a lack of information. I believe we were maybe like a month away from release when we finally started getting all this information. That's highly unacceptable, especially when you're asking for a hundred some odd dollars for people to put down to pre-order and buy the SmackDown 10th Anniversary Edition. You know, it's like when you're asking people to do stuff like that and you're not releasing any information... How do you expect anybody to place a pre-order? And it's also, you're not giving us any information on, you know, what what we should expect in the game. You're not telling us what features. And I think at this point, it's pretty evident that the only reason why they weren't giving us any information was because, you know, the game was essentially half-made. Um, I even made the argument when I was recording with Dan was that when they released the quote-unquote gameplay trailer... If you pay attention to that trailer, a third of it is just entrances. There is no gameplay. It's just a superstar walking down the ramp or doing a signature pose on the turnbuckle. There is no gameplay going on. Um, but with 2K14, a neat feature was that they would um, release a entrance and a finisher in one video for a particular superstar. So, for example, let's say, you know, when we were two or three weeks away from release... Um, they would, you know, like, let's say today they would do John Cena, you know, finisher and entrance, you know, today. Tomorrow they would do, for example, Roman Reigns, finisher and entrance. The next day they would do Mick Foley, entrance and finisher, you know, like they would give you something new each and every day. And the videos are actually still there. You know, for those of you who want to go back and look at those, they're all on the, on the 2K YouTube page. It's all there. I felt like this was such a good way of giving us a little something each and every day, kind of hyping up the game and getting your audience excited, um, which obviously this year there's there was a big lack of information. Uh, we literally found things out through other YouTubers who were covering it, you know, through um, going to traveling to Vegas and experiencing the game and coming back with all of their recordings. So it wasn't even 2K that was putting out the information. It was other it was other gamers, you know, who religiously make YouTube content, you know, for 2K games. So in a nutshell, this first bullet point basically just specifies that for 2K21, you cannot lack information. And I especially like at this point, if you're trying to make it up to the fans, and you're trying to 
um, regain their trust and trying to get some eyeballs on the product, you can't just lack the information and ask for a hundred some odd dollars for a pre-order. Like that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so that's my first bullet point on that. So moving forward, you know, now we're actually getting into, you know, the game itself. What does the game present? So looking at the main menu, it's packed with features and modes. For example, 30 years of WrestleMania, um, continue the tradition of reenacting moments and matches from real life, but was still relatively new and not repetitive. Um, it offered uh, tons of unlockables such as attire, superstars, and arenas. Then you had the Undertaker Streak mode, um, two modes that offered hours of entertaining gameplay and something new and not carried over from other games. So let's let's essentially break this down. So, you know, uh, talking about like, you know, the, the, the career mode at the time or like, you know, the, the game modes at the time, um, you had 30 years of WrestleMania. Um, this, I think this is what holds 2K14 in such high regard is because the mode itself doesn't just revolve around a couple years. It doesn't revolve around just one era. It revolves around multiple eras. And I mean, props to 2K, you know, because you can imagine they had to go through each and every era. They had to, you know, label everything and go, okay, who can we grab from each and every WrestleMania and put into this one mode and, you know, tune it, like, turn the volume way up. 30 Years of WrestleMania was such a fun mode to play. And, and keep in mind, this was still, like, the whole thing of getting something from the past, you know, like, matches and moments and recreating it in WWE games was still relatively new. It's not, like, right at this point, it's it's beaten down. Like, you think about it, WWE 13 was the Attitude Era. That, and now it's 30 Years of, you know, WrestleMania. Then 2K14 was, or I'm sorry, 2K15 was, you know, the two rivalries between CM Punk and John Cena and Triple H and Shawn Michaels. 16 was the Austin Showcase. 17, 18, there was no showcase. 19 was the Daniel Bryan Showcase. And now this year, of course, is the Four Horsewomen. I feel like, quite honestly, after 30 years of WrestleMania, I would have stopped the whole, um, let's, you know, make a uh, reincarnation you know, of what happened in real life and who faced who and all this. And I felt like 13 and 2K14 was a healthy dosage of, okay, we, we did this. We did the whole recreating moments. Let's now try to do something else. Let's go back to original storytelling. Um, you know, and at like, I'm going to be honest, I have yet to get the game again. I'm pointing that out. But I can say I'm not really looking forward to doing the, the showcase mode. Like, I'm just doing it just to unlock all the attires and arenas and all that. But to say that I'm actually excited for the mode itself would be an understatement. I genuinely am not. I'm not looking forward to it. It's a chore more than anything at this point. Um, and then, you know, so, and then 30 years of WrestleMania, like, it genuinely felt like if you play through the whole thing, like, there's a lot. Like, they gave you a lot to unlock. You have attires, you have superstars. The fact that you had all, at the time, all 29 WrestleMania arenas, and plus you had WrestleMania 30, which was, like, a, a fictional, you know, arena that was made because uh, WrestleMania 30 hadn't happened yet. Um, but I feel like the fact that they put that work in, you know, and there were so many WrestleMania arenas that looked somewhat similar, and I'm glad that they didn't, you know, cut corners around it. Like, they actually gave you all 29 arenas, and that's including, like, you know the pay-per-views at the time, the Raw and SmackDown arenas at the time. So they gave you a lot, and you could do custom arenas. So when it came to arenas in 2K14, there was no shortage. There was actually a surplus. Um, now, with 30 years of WrestleMania, with that out of the way, you know, uh, again, a fun mode to play. I feel like you can go back to it at any time and just start it from the beginning and just play through the whole thing. It's really fun. Um, some of the cutscenes were a little wonky they were a little out of place sometimes like with commentary not being enthusiastic or you know like you know the stone cold Slender looking kind of rough on a few of the cut scenes but that's just me nitpicking um other than that there are there are some other mo you know cut scenes and moments where it's like yeah like they like they did a really good job of replicating all of this um and then you had the streak mode i felt like again they were paying attention to what's going on at the time they were they were honoring the undertaker you know he had just been 
um, 21 and 0. And so they thought, what's a good way we can honor The Undertaker? And keep in mind, 2K14 also had a, you know, a pre-order. If you pre-ordered, you would get the, I believe it was called the Phenom Edition. Um, so, the, you know, it was a good way of putting something into the game without having people, pay, you know, pay for it. Oh, you know, pay 20 bucks and, and, you know, get this new mode, you know, the streak mode. Um, the streak mode was awesome. Uh, whether you were defending the streak or you were trying to beat it, especially like the the whole thing of trying to, you know, defend the streak what was fine. It was it's basically a slobber knocker match, which was, by the way, an unlockable um, which was a, like, like, see, that gives you value. Like when, when you play through a game mode and you unlock a feature like that, you feel like you're doing it for something. And even not, you know, let's say if you do unlock it, you could always go back and you could try playing through it again. It's, it was actually kind of fun. Um, but more importantly, you know, the defeat the streak mode. They basically what they did was you would pick a superstar and you would play against the Undertaker at that fictional WrestleMania 30 arena. And but the only catch this time is that no matter if the game is on easy, normal, or legend difficulty, the Undertaker, you know, is at a is in a whole different, you know, ball game. Essentially he's harder to beat, and there are these very select moments where, you know, certain theatrical stuff happens. For example, the lights would go out, they would come back on, he's right behind you and he has a finisher. Or let's say if he's down on the ground, you would go near him, he would all of a sudden grab you and he would choke on you or he would put you into the Hell's Gate. Um, or, you know, he would kick out of five finishers, you know, like you really had to like do a number on him for him to stay down. But it was one of the most funnest modes that you will ever play. Like, like honestly, again, it's one of those things where you could just plug in the PS3, go into this mode and just play it. Um... So, again, like, this is what I'm talking about, is that 2K14 had this originality to it. It wasn't just washed down repetitive modes from previous games. It was new features, new modes, new things that, you know, kept it, you know, that gave it a lot of longevity. And it helped it feel original at the time. Now, maybe if they were to do it, it'd be like, okay, we're beating a dead horse with this mode, but okay, fine, I'll take it. But with 2K14, it was new, it was refreshing, it was rejuvenating, it, you know... So, again, another reason as to why 2K14, you know, had the prestige that it had it was because of, of awesome game modes like the streak mode and the 30 years of WrestleMania. So now, um, another thing that made it great was roster packed with legends, Hall of Famers, and current superstars. Healthy dose of superstars from the 80s to current day at the time. Didn't have too many duplicates, offered tons of attires for various superstars, that was complete with attire, entrance, victory scenes, entrance music, and entrance motions. So, a lot to talk about for this one. So, for those of you who have been religiously listening from the beginning, you know, BA Select Start, you know, the series that we're doing, I have a pet peeve when it comes to 2K, you know, wrestling video games, or just wrestling video games in general. I have noticed that in current years, there's been so many duplicates for superstars, you know, like to give you an idea, I believe it was 2K17 or 2K18, we had five stings in the game and all of them were in different slots. You know, last year for 2K19, we had seven Daniel Bryans. Um, you know, this year we have four Charlotte, we have five Charlotte Flares, we have four Sasha Banks, we have three Baileys, we have four Becky Lynch's. Now, my argument is not that we don't have different, that, that we don't have various versions of a superstar because I love that. I like diversity. I like, you know, um, different, you know, costumes and attires and stuff. But the problem is that, you know, I feel like what 2K14 did was, let's say, for example, you select, um, let's see, who's a good example? You know, you would select, for example, The Rock. You select The Rock, and The Rock had all of his entires in just one slot. You didn't have to go through multiple slots. You know, I'm talking about, you know, the, um, the 90s Rock. If you would select him, you know, it would come up. WrestleMania 15 attire, WrestleMania 17 attire, WrestleMania 16 attire, WrestleMania 18 attire. All of these attires were in one slot. It wasn't, oh, it was, uh, The Rock, you know, 99. The Rock 99, The Rock 2000, The Rock 2001. It was just one rock and you had all these attires. 
And what was so neat was that you not only did you get the attires, you would get the entrances that would come complete with whatever he was using at the time, complete with the victory motions and the theme music and the and the Titan Trons that he was using at the time. So you would get different versions of The Rock all in one slot. And you didn't have to worry about going back and altering his theme music just because you wanted him to come out to this song. Like whatever Rock you selected for whatever year it was, he would come out to that appropriate entrance, Titan Tron, attire, music, all that. And I feel like now they don't have that. They make duplicate superstars, you know, and you don't have the ability. Like let's say, let's say in 2K20, I select Hulk Hogan and I go to Superstar Threads and I give him a NWO attire. The only problem now is that if I change his theme music to the Rock House theme song for NWO, the original Hogan who's in red and yellow is going to come out to the NWO theme song and it's like I don't want that. I want him to come out to Real American for his red and yellow attire to the Rock House theme in his NWO attire. And 2K14 did such a good job of grouping this together and making it neat, making the presentation neat and very, you know, package deal-esque. Um, instead of now where it's Finn Balor is one guy, Demon Finn Balor is another guy, and Sting, you know, current Sting is one superstar, and, you know, old Sting is another slot, and it's like, why can't we just have one superstar with multiple attires? Um, and again, I kind of went off track, but the roster in 2K14, honestly, there isn't too many people missing. There really, really isn't. Like when you look from 80s to current gen at the time, we're talking 2013, um, there isn't a whole lot of people missing from the game. Like you have everyone that you can possibly get your hands on. Now, granted, Bray Wyatt is missing and you know, all these new superstars, you know, from NX, like the Johnny Gargano, the Tommaso Champas, and all, like the Adam Coles, you're not going to find those guys there, because obviously they they weren't under WWE contract at the time, but there is the create a superstar tool, you can easily go in there, make the superstar, give them the, the appropriate move set, and that's it, you're set, um, but the roster is very complete. I feel like a roster nowadays, you know, they have to go through contract issues and, you know, for whatever insane reason, that they'll they'll bump out a superstar and they'll put them back in. Like Mick Foley. Mick Foley was in WWE 2K18. Then for some insane reason, he goes missing in 2K19. And now all of a sudden I have to pay, what is it, you know, uh, $10 when the DLC comes out for me to play as Mankind. And it's like, you know, it's not cool when you have a superstar or a feature in the game for free and then a year or so down the line you tell people, oh, you got to pay now extra to play as a superstar. Well, that's not fair. You know, like I think Goldberg is one of the best examples where because he was a pre-order in 2K16, okay, so you had to pre-order to play as Goldberg and then in 17, 18, 19, and 20, he's remained in the game like no problem. Um, now, granted, Goldberg has been a, more part of the WWE than Mick Foley has in recent years, um, but that, that's no excuse to bump him out of the game. Like, just leave his model in the game and let people play as Mick Foley. Um, so, yeah, another thing that made 2K14 great was that it spanned over generations of the 80s, 90s, early millennium, and the 2010s. And it gave you everyone and like in different eras, like if you went back to Randy Savage or Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan, you had the different eras of Hulkamania in there with the different attires, the different, you know, uh, entrance motions and all that. The Like every it was. And I and again, if there is one word that I can use to describe 2K14, it's complete. It is a very complete game. There is not a whole lot of loopholes where you can go. I could have done that, you, they should have done that, they shouldn't have put this in there, they should have put that in there. Very, very complete game. So, uh, and, and the roster was a big part of that. So, now we move down to the creation suite. So, 2K14 was the prime example of taking creation modes from previous games and expanding on it. As well as OMG moments, catching finishers, comebacks, and introducing double finishers. Um, there, there was a couple bullet points here, but I'm going to go through them, you know, one by one. So the creation suite, again, one word to describe it is complete. You had every mode here from previous games and they were taken, they were modified and they were put into 2K14. 
it was expanded upon, it was improved upon, you know, they had create a finisher. Uh, the one mod that I crave for, even more than GM mode, I know a lot of people, you know, want that mode back in the game, was create a story. Create a story was so fun to do because you could literally take your own ideas. No matter how goofy or realistic you want to make it, I would sit there for hours. I wouldn't even do an exhibition match. I would turn on my PS3, pop in the game, go to create a story, and I would even have my own keyboard. I would plug it into the PS3 and I would start typing out all the little you know, promos for the superstars and who feuds with who and who attacks who. And it was such a fun mode that I feel like even if you don't want to do any exhibition matches, you can just go to create a story mode and just create whatever to, like, to your heart's content. No matter how goofy or how realistic or how you know indifferent you want to make it, you were able to do it. Um, and what was so neat about 2K14, I believe, was that this was the first year where you had a branching story. So not only was it, because at first it was linear, it was you, your story would have one direction. And But in 2K14, they said, okay, well, let's make it branching so that if a superstar selects option A, they go down this path. If they select option B, they go down this path, you know? So it's like you would have different options. And, and the best part was you would be able to... to to upload this onto community creations and you could even download other people's stories and just play it um so again it like it gave you something new even when the game was out even if you played the 30 years of wrestlemania and you had played the, the um the streak mode to death there was still something new in a sense because you would go to community creation and you would just download you know stories and you would play it if you didn't like it delete it if you like if you loved it go ahead and keep it you know and play it over again or see what the different uh, branching stories are so um you know the creative superstar was really cool at the time um create a moveset create an entrance create a victory i honestly felt like a lot of features were much more easier to use in 2k14 than they were now so for example the highlight reel the highlight reel if i ever had you know like a cool moment in a match i would save it and I felt like the functioning and like the controls of trying to fast forward the clip or go back or change the camera angle was much, much easier to use in 2K14. I just tried it on 2K19 the other day and I felt like it, I had a menu. Then if I wanted to change the camera angle, I would have to go into a sub menu. Then I would have to like, you know, shift it around. And it, it was so complicated to use. I finally, I was like, I'm not doing this. You know, I, I tap out. Um, but in 2K14, it was so easy to use, you know, the controls, like you, like it was one of those things where once you would go into that mode, like it was muscle memory, like you already know the controls, you know, you're so used to it. Um, like, so highlight reel was easy to use, um, you know, and also one feature that was so cool to have was importing in music. There was a way of downloading music from like YouTube and then just inserting it into the game. And you can you can even, you know, assign it to superstars, you know. So, for example, let's just say if, you know, I remember I did it for um, uh, Kane because he didn't have his out of the fire theme song. So I went in there and I just I, you know, downloaded that theme, put it into 2K14. And now every time Kane would come out, he would come out to that theme, um, you know, uh, which like again, like it was those small things that just made the game so complete. Like even in, in creating a superstar, you had that option to import in music. Um, and I know they don't do it now because I don't know if it's copyright reasons or if they just they don't want to do it or what the reason is. But it was a neat feature that they had and unexplicably they took it out. I don't see any signs of them wanting to put it back in. I don't know. But again, it was a very neat thing, you know, that just gave it that one more that they gave that gave it that touch to complete, you know, a create a superstar or to even give, you know, uh, a, a current superstar a different theme song. Once again, a way of kind of giving the game something new. Um, then you had, you know, the expansion of the OMG moments. I believe there were a few more catching OMG moments, uh, new OMG moments. Um, they also introduced the, the double finishers. And again, this was an example of them paying attention to what was going on with the product at the time um, and not making everything such a mini game. Um, you know, uh, like, for example, Ryback at the time, who was you know, a top star um, going into that title picture, he would do the double shell shock where he would get two guys on his back and he would do the move. So they put that in the game. 
you had the the double choke slams there was one more the the double attitude adjustment that was kind of you know a neat little thing you know you had the omg barricade spear which was introduced in 13 but they they brought it back to 2k14 and they still have it to this day you know um they expanded they gave us you know the the broke kick you know to to the steel post ddt on the apron you know um they had all these different things that they were implementing which made it so fun um and the 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 best part is that when they would implement these small little features they wouldn't program it as a mini game they would program it as just get two finishers press triangle and you have this ability to do double finishers and uh comebacks 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 was a major thing um they took it and they expanded upon it like hulk hogan's comeback is probably the best comeback in the game you know it's the only one that i can really remember but it was the best comeback in the game um you know and the part that sucks with comebacks is for whatever the best part about 2k14 was once again there wasn't a whole lot of restrictions um nowadays in these games there's a lot of restrictions for whatever insane reason if you have a match that expands beyond six man you are not allowed to have a comeback um if it's six man or more you you cannot do a comeback and i don't know why there's a reason why it's called a comeback you would press triangle you had an opportunity to do a sequence of moves and earn a signature but for whatever insane reason i guess they thought hey there's six guys in the ring at the same time you don't need it you know to have a comeback forget it but back in 2k14 the one match i would i would always do was a six man uh battle royal elimination battle royal but it wasn't over the top rope it was either pinfall or submission and it would be cool when all of a sudden if you were if there were three guys in the match that were really beat up you know you would see them you know do the comeback and it was like okay well now you have to be a little bit more cautious because you got three people with comebacks coming at you and you know if they if they are successful they're gonna get a finisher so again comebacks were cool the omg moments were cool the catching finishers and the the double finishers were, were a very good uh you know thing you know to to progress the game give it a new feel um and the creation suite was was great was was awesome like there was a lot to do there wasn't a whole lot of restrictions you could pretty much make your superstar however you wanted 2k14 was a game that i really experimented with the creation suite like i created a lot of very generic superstars and just trying to make them as generic as i could possibly make them or as sophisticated as i wanted to make them but nowadays with these games i don't really do that i don't really experiment a whole lot with them you know i'm just like okay let's try it out and then maybe sometimes even halfway i'm like okay i'm bored with this and i'll just i'll I'll quit and and i'll you know i'll play an exhibition match but moving forward um uh 2k14 was a wrestling game that offered great pacing realistic gameplay didn't feel like the player was restricted developed you know at a time when everything was not restricted as a mini game think about all the matches superstars modes we've lost since 2k14 again i think that once we jumped into 2k15 um the roster shrank um some modes disappeared and then as time went on when we went on to next gen um it just it felt like we were being restricted 2k14 you could run around uh granted if you did it for like eight or nine seconds your superstar would slow down insinuating that hey you got to let the guy breathe for a second but there was no bar you know that you would have to wait for it to you know regenerate for you to do a finisher you could do a finisher whenever you wanted to um your guy wouldn't drop down to a knee um there was no restrictions on you know like i said the the comebacks um you know everything was just really fun like you you could do whatever you wanted however you want you could play the game however you want and now it's oh well and you know the funny thing is again i go back to this things that i could have done for free in 2k14 i now have to earn or i have to complete a challenge or i have to do this like for example move thief move thief you could do in 2k14 no problem you didn't have it was an ability everybody had it you just would have to press an extra button you would steal a finisher now i have to equip myself with that ability and i have to use it and let's just say if i have move thief and resiliency if i use move thief then i can't use my resiliency i have to i have to build that back up and then and then i can use it 
So it sucks. Like, it really sucks when you're restricted as a player, when there's all these different things that are restricting you. Oh, you, you can't do that move because you have to do this first. Or, oh, you can't do that because... And that whole rolling out of the ring feature where if you take some damage in a triple threat or a fatal four-way and beyond, you know, you roll out of the ring and you're out of there for like 25 seconds or 30 seconds and it's like, what's going on? Like, why would you put this in the game? Furthermore, why haven't you taken it out? Um, I have deliberately avoided triple threats, fatal four ways, fatal five ways. I avoid all that because I don't want to go through with that get with that stupid mini game. Like it's it, there's no point. It's another way of 2K trying to, you know, put a, a realistic touch on the game, but they don't realize that they're restricting the game. They're not making it fun. They're making it less fun. Now, there, there is um, one thing that they do is that, you know, when a superstar takes a heavy amount of damage, they roll out of the ring and then slowly stand up on their feet and they get back into the ring. That one is okay. You can keep that in there. That doesn't, you know, that gives you a chance to kind of regroup, you know, and get back in the fight. But when I have to wait for a particular bar to regenerate... That's where I have a problem, is that I'm being restricted, I can't do what I want, heck, even sometimes I get cost the match. If it's a triple threat, I roll out of the ring, and I and because I can't ro get back in the match because there's a little mini game going on, one guy covers the other guy, one, two, three, the match is over, and it's like, well, okay, I lost the match without really losing a match, you know? So, in my personal opinion, 2K14 was one of those last games, well, was the last game where... Those restrictions didn't apply. My superstar wouldn't get slowed down. I get that some people like that, that the superstar slows down, there's fatigue, there's this. And I would have that as a feature. Like in the main menu, before you press, press start for the loading screen to go on the screen and for the match to start, you can set it and go, okay, match pace. Fast, slow, really fast, you know, normal. How do you want it? And depending on what you select, then it like let's say if you do a slow pace match your superstar will drop to one and your superstar will have to wait for the health to regenerate for you to do a finisher if you do a normal match or a fast paced match that stuff will not be existent so i feel like again giving the player options is better than just having oh a, a mini game where you roll out of the ring and you have to regenerate your health like why you, you you're you're taking me out of the game and you are increasing the chances of me turning off the game and not playing it. So, again, 2K14 did a really good job with this. You had a lot of freedom. You could do whatever you want. You were not restricted. Everything was easy to use and easy to get back into. Um, so, yeah. So, my final notes is that um, 2K14 might have been a game that came out at the right time with the right development um but if 2k wants to get the ball rolling again especially with the disaster that was 2k20 um they need to go back and play 2k14 and just take just take notes like just take notes on what worked what could have been better um if 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 this game um and its features were uh were doable, you know, on the last gen of gaming, um, then, you know, it's capable of being done, you know, in gaming now. Um, you know, again, like the simplest thing of, you know, giving, you know, multiple attires and, you know, assigning, you know, different theme music for each attire. The fact that we don't have that now, the fact that we don't have create a story anymore, we don't have create a finisher anymore. Uh, we have a lot of people missing from the roster. It's like, you know, well, you did it before, so why can't you do it again? And, you know, again, if I, I, I'm, I'm throwing it out there. 2K14, in my personal opinion, was the best 2K wrestling game out there. Bar none. Um, and if, if 2K wants to get the ball rolling and go, okay, we let our fans down. A lot of people are not going to want to buy the game that we release um what can we do like where can we find a foundation where we can build off of something i would say take 2k14 the complete game just copy and paste it onto whatever platform that you're using to develop the game and start making tweaks update the roster update the modes you know 
maybe take out the streak mode because it wouldn't make sense if you have that mode in 2K14 and you bring it back in 2K21. So you can take that out. But give us the slobber knocker matches. Give us the gauntlet matches. Give us the creative story again. You know, don't even improve it. Just just put it back in the game for now. Because I feel like asking them to improve something is a way of like, oh, put a mini game behind it. Um, speaking of which, take out the minor stuff that doesn't do anybody any favors. Take out those mini games. Take out those restrictions. Take out the the non ability for me to do a comeback when it's six man or more. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. Like why would you do that? So yeah, like those are pretty much all my notes. I mean, two K nineteen came close as a game that was like okay, this is fun to play. They had some fun with it with the big head mode and all that, you know. And that's what I'm talking about is that when you give a game features like that. It makes it fun. It like it gives it some replay value. It, it, it makes it a little bit goofy, but it makes it a little bit you know fun to play. Um, but then I felt like with two K twenty, it's like they took a major step back. Um, and again, my solution is that if you want, and I think that's why two K fourteen was so fun at its core. It's because just the gameplay. I'm not even talking about. 30 years of mania i'm not talking about the streak i'm not talking about creative story i'm not talking about creative superstar just exhibition mode where you could select your superstar select the match and just get into it gameplay at its core was so fun like you know there was nothing that slowed you down there was nothing that made it you know um that made it boring or repetitive it was great. Like you would, ha- I would have so many like you know cinematic moments in a match where I would reverse something and I would quickly hit a finisher and you know the guy would kick out and it, it like so many moments like that. Where now it's like, well, if I counter something, my um, energy bar might may not be um, you know regenerated enough for me to hit a finisher. So I go to hit a finisher and oh, I can't because I don't have enough health to do so. Um, and again, like again, you are restricting the player. That's what that's what I describe. You know, every game that came after two K fourteen was a lot of restrictions, a lot of banned stuff that should have been in the game but wasn't. Um, honestly, like as I'm talking about it now, I have a major urge to pop out the PS three and just play two K fourteen. Very fun game, complete roster, complete modes. There you go, guys. Like that's that's my review of two K fourteen, and you know, uh, again. I will go back and, you know, I ask this to all the viewers. What do you feel like 2K needs to do, like, you know, pronto? What's the first step that they need to take to ensure that 2K21 becomes, you know, a really good wrestling game? I've said it before. I'll say it one more time. If you want 2K21 to be a good game, take 2K4. First of all, go play 2K14, 2K. Play the game. Take notes. And just experience how fun it is then take 2k14 the entire game copy it onto the platform that you use to develop your games and just tweak it make tweaks don't don't take things out you know don't restrict it don't put rules behind things just make it fun make it complete make it entertaining give people you know their money's worth don't charge people 120 some odd dollars for the smackdown edition and have them get a non-autographed card by edge so there you go guys uh another uh edition of ba select start you know concluded uh save your progress and do not turn off the console i'll catch you guys next time